you guys look at the minutes. Assessor, recorder, flooring bid, stop loss renewal, uh, and verity. So, at any rate, uh, does anyone have any comments or anything they'd like to have prior to us beginning the meeting with anything on this agenda? Thanks. Are you going to have comments as they come up? Yeah, we'll do that for you. Um, I would just like for the commission to know that the scope of work for the treasurer's office was to remove, you know, where the wall's crumbling down from the water leak, paint, new carpet. They've already got the new carpet in there, can't touch the walls at all. So, what? Okay. They need to. Okay, we're, they're on the agenda. They put carpet in. They put carpet in for anything else. Mm -hmm. For their paint. So they need to replace the carpet when they're done. Yeah, I agree with that. That's not the first one. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone, anything, anyone else have anything with regard to items on this agenda right now? We will cover each one individually as we go. I, I thought you guys were giving me the look like they wanted to say something. I totally misread it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sorry. We're going to start jumping through these one at a time, then. If anyone have any, has any questions while we go, they're welcome to it. Um, first item on the agenda is Lake the Ozarks Multiplex. This is a letter of support. Um, they're pursuing an economic development grant. Uh, this one is specifically for the mall in Osage Beach. several other state reps and a lot of local employees at the mall have signed on and named on it. Uh, you guys are good to give us on a sentence. I'd make a motion that we uh, link of the Ozarks multiplex pass the letter of support. I second. Those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. <coughs> Your name's up there. All right. Okay, next thing up on. Does anyone have any questions on that? Okay, we'll move on. Uh, Con Road, name change. Or Pecan Road. Depends on where you're from. Depends on how you want to pronounce it. what? Uh, I don't actually know where the con road is. I think I looked it up. It's up there in Hollow. Oh, it is yeah, in Hollow. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is what we're changing to. Yeah, this is the one that you guys had reached out to me. They had reached out to you yeah. about changing it for the uh, holidays. Yeah, it's yeah, kind of like a Yeah, it's kind of like a Christmas gift. Yeah. Um, the names that they sent to us on the petition of the three. Papa's Ranch Road would be suitable, okay. and it's not taken. So I mean, we wouldn't have any objections to it. The only, the only thing we had to address was the name change for your approval, and then the fee. Okay. We have a, and however you guys want to handle that is, it don't matter to us. Uh, everything appears to be in order. Yeah, and we've we've done all the the back work on it. It's. The road is 110% on their two parcels. That doesn't affect any other structure, doesn't affect any other property. Okay. It's their own private drive. Okay. Are you okay with the way too? Yeah, we're okay with the way we Yeah, it's not the... Okay. 
I would like to make a motion to change the con road to Office Ranch Road and to uh, wait to see to make any change. I'll second that. Those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Um, we don't really have an officer to sign, do you? No, no, we just needed it in the minutes that you guys approved it. Mm -hmm. All right. Jeez. We're good. They don't have any questions on this particular it's just for the family. Okay. All right, abatements. Uh, this is just basically a verification of the abatements that we've done for November. In November. I got through the ones that we didn't do, and I would make a motion that we approve those. I second. Those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. If anyone have any questions on this, what the process is? We're the only ones in the state doing this. Uh, well, probably more, without question, more in, in compliance with the law with regard to abatements than any other county in the state. It's a complex law. Okay. Uh, next thing we got is collector, assessor. So we had take over. More in the attention. How is it that you're getting a bit that wasn't included in their G? They just took the floor out. So they didn't include putting the floor back. Because they didn't think there was asbestos in those offices. But they were taking the floor out anyways. Yeah. No, well, they didn't find asbestos in those offices until later. So <laughs> they, it was never part of the bid to take the flooring out. It's debatable. I mean, I thought the scope said very clearly get rid of all the asbestos. Sure. Yeah, it did, right? And then they found it in other offices. They wanted to charge us. We fought about that. <coughs> and they wanted to give us a change order for the floor. So is this their bid? No, this the is floor? completely, we're cutting them out completely on this flooring. How many bids do you have? One. Why is that? Nobody submitted a bid the first time. And then these guys came in after the fact. If I recall correctly, when the, uh, the, this project was initially bid, tell me if I'm wrong, but my memory says that uh, uh, Verity was the only bidder. No. Were there other bids? Um, no. Not on the floor? No, on this overall project. The entire project. Well, well it got sent to a bunch of energy companies, right? Johnson Controls, <coughs> weren't they one of the ones you all sent the invitation to? The list, I don't know if any of them were actually sent out to any of these folks. Do you have an application on that? I don't know. I don't think there's even a requirement under the law to actually send it directly to them. It has to be published. Mm -hmm. There's no requirement. Is Marty in here? Or Teresa? Yeah. Have you guys reviewed this? No, I've never seen it. Okay, you want us to table it again? I, I just want Lori to put back in my office that bit. <laughs> I, mean, I don't care. I'd rather have it on the concrete. But I guess is what this goes down not, to is. Okay, that yeah. the price on it, Marty, for all uh, it's actually they did all three of your car uh, offices. It's thirty thousand five sixty. How many square foot is that? Uh, it says six thousand six hundred six square yards. It says square yards. Square yards. So that's eighteen thousand square that's foot. That's eighteen thousand square foot. That's not. Bad. That's not bad. If that's, that's true, bad. if that's accurate, that's not that's bad. Here, look at it. What kind of flooring are you pricing? Is it? Like I don't know. I told you all to get together and figure it out. I've never seen it. <clears throat> so where is it from? Richardson. I, hey, don't mean to bring this up, but I'm building a house, so they're doing a quote on mine, and if that's the case. Personally, I'm going to pay for more of the counties because I'm paying a lot more per square foot than than this. Uh, you got your wrong on the thirty thousand. It's forty-seven pay. It's almost fifty thousand. So that's them installing forty-seven thousand six thirty-three on that's materials labor. Total. Yeah. Good God. Seventeen thousand to lay it, and then thirty thousand for phasing materials. So they're under a dollar a square foot. But that's total. 
lay it. Rich, what's that say? Rich, rigid, rigid core. Click. It's click lock. You're getting the uh, LVT vinyl sound like. Which is, which I mean, all I have is the same thing. I think that's what they did in the ones. Yeah, that's what it is. The problem you'll run into, did they tear all the baseboard and everything off? The vinyl. So I don't mm -hmm. think I had mm -hmm. bass. I had like. Because that stuff's a lot shorter. So when they put that LVT in, all your existing bass. We have code with, with, it, with baseboard in the back, but in the front, all we have is that rubber stuff. Well, you've got your. Your front counter has yeah, got a piece of base that goes over the carpet, right? Mm -hmm. It was in the office. Well, the, the, in the lobby, that is some kind of. Uh, you guys have heard of the high cliff flooring out there, and then it went off to the side. Now, the rest of it was all carpet. That's what they said, but then they went and they were just seeing the rest of it. That's what they said. Well, there was in my office. Oh, in the front, yeah, there was the last time we went in, they had well, the back of it on the front, so very good. Yeah. And they originally went through, there was, they said that there was no asbestos in those offices, specifically Teresa's yeah. in the front end of Barton's. We need to go over and over. Well, we want to table this, you better. Okay. Can we There's three that? copies there. You're going to have to get one up to Donnie Snow anyway. I'll give it to him here when we're done. Here. Okay. I would have a motion to table uh, the floor and item. <clears throat> it's been reviewed by the selector assessor. I'll second that. Those in favor? All right. Okay, we're going to table this and have it reviewed. Under your stop loss policy uh, through the end of November, it could be more in the 
here, but right now it was at 17,804. So your net medical claims that the county paid out of its uh, claim fund was a million six thousand seven eighty nine. Okay. Prescription drug claims uh, through the 11 month period were almost 250,000. However, you did get back from your PDM, uh, a prescription drug rebate based off your utilization of 66,130. So your total prescription drug claims net after rebate is 183,721. So your total claims cost, medical and prescription for the 11 month period is 1 million. 190,510. If you look just to the right, I've annualized that number to estimate where we expect it should be at the end of December, which is just a function of dividing by 11 times 12. And so we expect claims to come in at the end of the year about 1.3, 1, 1,298,738. That's the claims cost portion of your health care plan. The second cost portion is your fixed cost. This would be your symmetric premiums, the premium you pay to the reinsurance carrier for your stop loss protection of $520,000 for the 11 month period. Your administration fee, which is the fee you pay to mutual medical plans who administers your health care plan, 114,345. And then your PPO access fee. This is the fee you pay to health link to access uh, provider discounts. Uh, your in network provider discounts of 21723 So, your total fixed cost for the 11 month period was 655763 That should annualize out to 715000 Bringing your total plan cost, claims, medical, and prescription, and their fixed cost for the 11 month period so far, 1846000 That should annualize out to just a scotch over $2,014,000. Could you talk about the administrative fees, please? Sure. The administrative fee is a thirty-five. It's based off of a base fee of thirty-five dollars per employee per month. We take the enrollment in January and whatever that is, we just use that that calculation for each twelve months. Each uh, party, either you or mutual medical, could request a recalculation of that headcount changes by 10% or more, and that's all in your admin. So you're saying every employee, you take a percentage? No, every employee, it's $35 per employee per month. And if your headcount changes by more than 10% from one month to the next, the county <clears throat> could request uh, a recalculation of that fee. We just charge a flat monthly amount each month. Instead of trying to figure out, all right, you got 292 employees this month, 293 the next month, 291 the next month, we just take the January enrollment times 35 for all 12 months, unless it changes by more than 10%, then either you or mutual medical could request a recalculation. Has your office <coughs> changed by 10%? We've been full at Room Bridge. No. It might be 10% down. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't think so, but we could close. <coughs> um, that's probably based on... I'd like to look at that, to be honest. <clears throat> I'd like to look into that. The calculation? Yeah. Okay. It's like how many employees we have. And... Absolutely. <coughs> so if you look at it for the current plan year, for each, for the 11 month period, and you, you want to audit the 11 month period of this plan year? Well, it says it's going up 10 grand. No, no. Um, the annualized, that's no, so, what we're at in what, Hanover? No, so this is what you've actually paid for the 11 month period, 114,345. It's about 10,000 more. Yeah, so yeah, in, it's about 10, in the end, more. it'll be 124. Correct. Mm -hmm. I think maybe it might be a little more clear when we get to the renewal section and you see the breakout of, of the head count. That last page is showing up. Right now we're using a headcount of 292 total employees. Times 35 is 10,220 monthly. What is the purpose of that fee over the top of your premium? Well, it's two different vendors. The, 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 the fee to mutual medical is your, your 
claim administrator. That's the fee for them to administer the health care plan, receive the claims from health plans, other providers, process the claim, send the checks out to the providers, send the explanation benefits out to the covered members, um, print ID cards, print plan documents, keep um, you uh, in compliance with regulatory changes. That's the administration of the health care plan. React is kind of the, the back office. We're like, we do all the things. If, if you're fully insured, like a Blue Cross, Blue Cross does all those. So we're performing all the administrative functions of the health care plan. The, the premium that you pay is to some Metro Life Insurance Company. That's to purchase the reinsurance policy to protect the county from catastrophic claims. So it's two different vendors. Well, what's when you mention all those those numbers, how much of that is money reimbursed to the marketplace? Um, I don't have that exact number. It, it's in this claim payment number, the million twenty four five ninety three for the first eleven. Part of that includes where you guys have paid into the healthcare marketplace. Correct. Healthcare the premiums. Well, we reimburse your members who are on the ACP. So the ACP is an alternative plan that you have designed to help. Uh, folks that we expect to have large catastrophic claims, <clears throat> instead of self-insuring those large catastrophic claims, we, we uh, create a false claim. And then put we create a false there. claim. We, we, we create a HIPAA qualifying event for them. Oh, excuse me, false qualifying event. That's what it was. Yeah, well, it's not a false qualifying event. It's an actual qualifying event. Because they lost health insurance. Correct, yes. Because you kicked them off. Well, your plan says that the plan reserves the right to terminate somebody's health insurance at any time when it's in their best financial interest. So when it's in their best financial interest, and they agree, it's not anything that we make anybody do. That they're this part is of a the choice by this is a choice by the employee by the, by the member, and so uh, that we terminate their major medical here. That creates a qualifying event for them to obtain a, a, an individual policy through the marketplace. And then the county health care plan pays the premium for that policy, as well as any out of pocket expense. So these are the folks that are going to have the most out of pocket expense out of their pocket and going to be the largest claims for the county. Uh, we're really just uh, finding a better alternative to pay for those claims. So if both parties come out ahead. Does the employee contact you guys, or you guys contact the employee when that change takes place? It, it's both. 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 Yeah. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. us contacting them based off things we're seeing in their claims while they're on the regular plan. Sometimes it's the employee who knows because somebody else in their office has been on it before and then they contact Jeremy or... I'm amazed, honestly, at this gray area that you guys have been operating under with that policy. It's you know made it this long. I'm amazed. I went right to the uh, Department of Labor. I spoke to him as well. And, and I asked them to direct <laughs> I, I spoke to them as well, and they told me the only way that anything would be done about it is if somebody filed a lawsuit under the False Claims Act. That's what I asked you about earlier. It is not legal. It's a gray area. But that's, you know, that comes we from... We have stop loss at the school, and I'm not, I'm not aware of the, this process. It's, you should look at it. I, 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 Over the last eight years, <laughs> when we were getting ready, when we were getting ready to, when I was getting ready to go into office, uh, Bev was in office and we were informed that the employees, that they was going to go up eight years ago to $750 a month. And the employees would probably have to absorb at the very beginning $250 a month out of their check and for Cameron County to be able to afford health insurance. Over the last eight years, Average income increase over the last eight years is minus 1.8 percent. This has been incredibly successful for our county. That may be, but you have to understand that if somebody does raise that claim, I mean, there's it's a lot of fines. <clears throat> James, when you were at the MAC conference, did, didn't someone stop you and talk about this? <coughs> From the I'm Department sure. of Labor. Yeah. And they told him what? What was their words? Like? And We're a governmental know. entity, so we can do whatever we want until a lawsuit's involved and it goes to the state, federal. <coughs> That's what I said. The false claims <coughs> that allows a private citizen such as myself to say, you're defrauding the federal government, so I sue you, and then I get a portion of whatever the fines are, which according to the ACA website is $39,000 per employee per year. 
So as far as that goes, the false claim action okay. is a way to fix it. Okay. So there's a lot of, uh, you know, our, our, we have a- You're not allowed to reimburse for ACA, first of all. That's yeah. straight from the ACA. An employer cannot pay your premium to the ACA. Well, actually, and it's really not the employer that's doing it. It's, it's the Camden oh. County Healthcare Plan, which has its own federal tax ID number and is separate from the ACA. So is this a practice that happens in other, and you know, <laughs> I have to tell you, just about anything that the federal government creates has got plenty of loopholes for them to play around in, and they know how to cheat the system, if you want to use that word. Uh, that doesn't make it illegal. Uh, I'm wondering, is this a common practice that other individuals use as well? All of our clients have been using this for since 2015. When I was we have a 30-year uh, benefits attorney that's looked at all this. Department of Labor has been in our office discussed all this uh, th there's no federal dollars involved in this at all um, when, when we uh, obtain uh, an individual policy via the marketplace that individual does not receive any subsidy for that normally if somebody's going to the marketplace to obtain insurance for themselves they're qualifying for a, a, a tax credit or a, a federal subsidy to help pay for that policy we do not apply for nor do we receive any of those dollars we pay the full premium charged by the insurance carrier. So this is not a cent of federal money involved in this whole thing. Okay, David. Yes, sir. So when there is, let's say there's a gap in coverage though, when we are moving someone <coughs> from our plan to the Affordable Care Act, what if something happens in that window where they are sick or have something catastrophic there, there would never be a gap. So our, when, when there's when, never a gap in this gap, insurance, never a gap. So. No. So so for instance, <laughs> look at that camera and tell them that. Well, Please. There, there's <laughs> never a gap. So when, when, um, when our insurance ends, Jeremy, you want to? That's all I wanted to hear. You don't have to explain it. No, here, let me. Um, so when we move someone to the exchange, it's the first of any month. So if they're on the regular plan then their regular plan coverage is good until the 31st at 11.59 p.m. The new policy picks up the first day of the month, 12 a.m. One ends, the other begins. There's no more breaking coverage. Yeah. Do you instruct them on how to fill out their tax forms? <coughs> on the tax form, in order to qualify for the ACA, one of the questions they ask is, does your employer offer minimum insurance coverage, correct? Well, they'll get a 1095 saying they have coverage through the exchange for so many months and, and a 1095 as well from the group. So again, we're not taking a tax credit. That's that's a big misnomer. Well, we must be saying the, the question about where yeah, this one offer is not speed. asked via the marketplace when they sign up. No, it's asking if they put the taxes. And if they put yes, they're not eligible. Okay. For the subsidy. Which they're not no, 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 no. For the subsidy. Uh, there's there's too many numbers. And I yes. want to compare it with their employee rate. Okay. Um, you want to make that a yeah. motion? Can, can I ask a question about that? Did you say that there was like one employee that has $85,000 that they've spent on? Is that what you said? There's, there's one individual <laughs> that exceeded the stop loss. Of, of 67. Yeah, and that's things that can't be discussed. Okay. I thought you were going to start no, talking about no, it. No, but we never um, exceeded our stop loss. So we all, our stop loss has always covered our individuals. You're talking about as, a, as an individual person? She's the, the president of the school, school board. board. I apologize. At the school district, our stop loss covers it. So we've never had, that I'm aware of, to cover something beyond our stop loss. Just throwing that Thank you. And I'll verify, but that's my understanding. Okay. Some years you don't. Right? There's been several years down here where you've never had any. Who does this? Who does this school use, Gail? McGrath. Okay. Hey, Gail. So what's the fee that McGrath charges the school for I, employees? I do not know offhand. Maybe maybe nine. Nine dollars. Okay. Per employee. 
Yeah, my husband. Yeah. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. Okay. Yeah, for the administration. I mean, that's what this whole conversation I'm sitting back here because I served also. Yeah, I. Thirty-five dollar fee. I think what James was getting at was what was alarming me the most versus what we were paying to McGrath for the administration of our well, of that health insurance plan. It seems uh, hold up there a minute. So McGrath and nine hold up a minute, really. Okay. The nine dollars <laughs> probably is what McGrath is being paid. In lieu of commission, there's also going to be because you have a McGrath isn't the TPA. What he's talking about, the thirty-five dollars is the TPA, the third-party administrator that's processing the claim. McGrath, the plan. McGrath, McGrath is you. probably using, I would imagine, and that may be the case. That just yeah, there's no so higher. so nine dollars is probably what they're getting paid per employee per that's month right. in lieu of a commission. Yes. That is not what you is being paid to the TPA. The 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 that is built into the stock so you can just, get a commission just like that would be. We can have that in contact. We can contact our superintendent. Yeah, I'd like, to, I'd like to compare those. Yeah, and we just, need to, we just did our renewal and they'll have somewhat the fresh in there. But whoever the TPA is, they're charging a PEPM okay. to process those funds. Right. Just like so we're kind of degenerating here. Uh, this is, James wants to, is, is wanting to review, uh, review this, so I would entertain a motion to table this. I'll make a motion to table the health plan cost analysis. But not the discussion of the renewal that I haven't even got to. I also want to add that we have quite a bit more employees than you guys used to. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Um, so you want to look at this then, and then we'll, uh, when do you want to put this back on? Because, I mean, we have to have this renewal for the end. Yeah, so the, the main purpose of the visit is to, to, to share the stock loss renewal. Um, that goes into effect January 1st. And I, I highly advise you to, to continue this meeting to address the stop loss portion of this so you have reinsurance to cover your plan effective January 1st. It doesn't need to be done today. I can. Okay. Just Thursday's agenda? show you two options. The worst case scenario of the two options is an increase to your total maximum plan cost of less than 1%. If a 0.7% increase is the worst option I'm sharing with you today, the other option is a 0% increase. I, I think this conversation about it went different functions of it went. are, are we kind of muddy in the water it. for the purpose of this, of yeah. this meeting. And, and we're happy to address all those things. Yeah, and but then we're, this is about stop loss. This is about we need to get your to stop loss insurance renewed unless you want to be completely self insured, which I would not recommend. Well, I, I, I understand that. I, I just, you know, just like the administrative fees, I want to look into that. And I want to review it. And your administrative fees are under, a, uh, currently, they're under a three year agreement. You just finished the second year of that three year agreement. And so January 1st starts the last year of the three-year agreement that you've been operating under. So that $35 per employee per month is fixed for another year. There's no increase to that. The only increase we're delivering today is a 3% increase on your stop loss premium, which amounts to $16,000 a year. So it, it, your options are either pay $16,000 more a year on your stop loss premium, to stay at your current deductible, or raise your deductible $2,500, and, and have a zero percent increase. Well, and it's pretty easy renewal on the stop loss portion, and then and then we can get it as deep as you want on each component of your health care plan cost. We'd be happy to uh, address any questions and, and any comments or, or concerns that anybody has, whether it's legal or how it's built or what you know. That's definitely something we can be able to do. <coughs> but, but we need to get the at least present the stop loss. Well, present. Thank you. So then, um, I guess the, the second page was an eight year history. So that does show what Greg alluded to. Um, back in 2015, your Coventry renewal was 2.1 million, and 
that shows what we've actually spent. Uh, we've never, um, uh, this will be the first year we've exceeded $2 million. We've always been under $2 million uh, since we've taken over this plant. The third page is your soft loss removal. So it shows that your admin fee of $35 is not changing. Your health link fee is continuing to be $8. Oh, yeah. Well, so, and I, I didn't bring it in with me. Um, I joined a group called Employers Healthcare Coalition based out of Quincy, Illinois. Basically, they're just put together to get costs lower. One of our same group. Yeah, basically. One of their options is Health Link. Same Health Link you've got today, you're paying eight bucks for. Uh, we can join them. There is a fee, and it's $5.75 per employee per month. So it saves you two dollars to reduce your, your monthly per head per member per month. Uh, how long did that contract run? It, it would just be annual. It, whenever, the, if the county decided I want to go back to paying eight bucks, I go back to paying eight bucks. Do you see any decrease in delivery from usually when you pay a little less, you might not get quite No, so HealthLink is strictly a PPO. All they do is they contract with the doctors and the hospitals and they charge a fee to the doctors and the hospitals for joining and they charge the employers a fee for being part of it. It's the exact same thing because I, I reached out, actually, I reached out to the health link rep um, and said, you know, is this for just new groups or what about groups current? And she said, it would be for groups that are current. And I'm like, you just lost $2 and a quarter of a member a month, but okay. Um, so, yeah. You, they, you said there was a fee to join. Is yes. it a fee to join every year? Yes. Yes, there's so going to be a fee at every that year. Point when you add the fee to it, what is the cost per employee? It's so going to it's going to end up saving us probably about three thousand dollars a year over what you're paying today with that included. So about twenty five grand instead of twenty eight. What? So Ron had sent me an email about a different drug plan. Could you? I, I just read it briefly this morning, but could you expand on that? Was in a different drug plan. Yeah. So, yeah. what? Okay, what was it then? That's all I'm asking. So, I believe the email you're referring to is is a um, cost control strategy that he is looking to implement to protect the medical plan from certain high cost drugs. That's what it was. Yeah. So, like for it's... example, there's a new drug out. It's one dose. It's two point eight million dollars for the one dose. It's an infusion and it's paid for under your medical plan because it's given at a provider's office versus it's not a drug you go get at the pharmacy under your drug card. So it's not under your, your prescription drug plan, it's under your medical plan. Right. And we have language in our prescription drug plan to protect <coughs> large catastrophic claims, drugs that cost 10,000 or $20,000 a month. All right, but we don't have that language in our medical plan and, and but we need to start thinking about that because specialty medications are the fastest rising cost center of, of, of everybody's healthcare costs, okay? And, and as they create these new specialty designer drugs, they're just gonna get more expensive. And so it's just Ron trying to think ahead about how to protect these plans uh, from <coughs> $2.8 million drug costs that'll be under your medical, you don't know, have that protection now. So when you say protection, you mean basically this is a way to deny people those drugs? No, sir. It's a way no. to find another available payer to pay for the drug other than the member taking it and the county. So this insurance is the payer of last resort, right? Yeah. The effect of not having that would be to blow up our cement symmetric room. Absolutely. That's yes. what if you were taking on these uh, two point eight million dollar drugs or whatever they are, yeah. then you're gonna have people exceeding your stop loss deductible and your cement premium is gonna go up. But it's nothing we do is to deny somebody access. And everything we do is an employee friendly cost control. And for instance, the employee comes out ahead by having zero out of pocket and, and the county comes out ahead by not having to pay those expenses. The expenses get paid by another available payer, whether it's a private uh, health care plan, another employer health care plan. Uh, sometimes it can be Medicare, if it's an actively worked person that has Medicare. There are all these um, cost control strategies are employee friendly where the employee comes out ahead. But it's never to 
deny somebody coverage or not let them access what they need. I can't I can't really discuss any individuals. No, sir. No, but either. I can guarantee you that there are people that work at this county, multiple individuals who have had disastrous situations with health care under Camden County self-insured plan. <clears throat> they walked out of that with virtually zero bill. Virtually zero. And it's just not one individual. There's several. And, and no impact to your health care plan. And, well. and what has happened is we have been able to successfully control the costs over the last eight years of Camden County's healthcare cost and save multiple employees from financial disaster. Uh, at a rate, it's been pretty steady. The program has been successful. And speaking of rate, that would bring us to the second section here of this page. This is the stop loss renewal procedure, individual excess loss insurance. This is the policy that protects the county from having to pay any claims over a certain stop loss deductible. Yeah, and that's actually what's on this agenda. That's what's on the agenda, yes. So, okay. So your current deductible is 67500 and your premiums for that, uh, based off about 260 employees, uh, is about $542,000 a year. You see the rate there is single, one forty six ninety six and family is 335 Renewal A is to keep your same deductible. You don't take on any more risk. Keep your same deductible. Uh, risk for the county, the increase is 3%. 3% increase, they remain at $67,500 deductible. 3% equates to $16,268 a year. So an in premium increase to Symmetra of $16,000 a year to stay at your current deductible. Or your second option is raise your deductible, just like car insurance, the higher your deductible, the less your premium. So if you raise your deductible from $67,500 to $70,000, right, that's a $2,500 increase per employee um, that the county is responsible to pay under its health care plan, then your premiums remain what they are today. What did you Zero. say, $2,500 per employee additional? Well, the, the risk, your, your, your risk oh. for each employee would increase. Oh, like, <laughs> no, it's, not, it's not a premium, it's you're, you're, you're taking on more risk to reduce your premium. So, so in a nutshell, your options are don't change anything and pay $16,000 more or raise your deductible from 67.5 to 70 and, and pay the same amount you're paying today. Yeah. Right. We've, been, we've gone through this every, every year, year <clears throat> the last eight over years. the last eight years. So, so the net effect to, to everything we've talked about is your total maximum plan cost for 2023 uh, if you stay at your current deductible and pay the 3% more on stop loss, your maximum plan cost is going to increase 0.7%. That's less than 1%. Or if you raise your deductible to 70000 it's zero. It's the same as you're paying today. So those are two very good options, two very easy options. This, this assumes the same benefits, no change in employee deductible, no change in employee co-insurance, no change in employee co-pays, all that staying the same. We're not shifting any cost to you. Right? No premium cost. No, no premium, premium cost to the employee increase. Everything stays the same. So um, we're discussing a $16,000 increase in your expense uh, to stay the current deductible. And we've given you an option to, to keep your, your premiums the same as they are today. So I'm sorry I'm going to ask a lot of questions, but I didn't get to ask them at the first one. So in 2018, we were at 1.6 million, and then 2019, we jumped up to 1.9 million. 2020, 1.8, 2021, 1.9. Is that based on the claims? That's, that's yeah. the actual claims you've paid, as well as the fixed costs. So you see that the two, the two um, itemized lines here, fixed costs, which is all your premiums and fees, fixed costs mm -hmm. are premiums to Symmetra, fees to Future Medical, fees to Health Link for each year, and then your net claim to be your medical and prescription. So the numbers you're looking at is your total plan cost, actual dollars spent by the county. Yep. Okay. And we were going to be eight years ago at $2.2 .2 million if we renewed Correct. our previous insured Coventry renewal Coventry renewal within 2.2 million. million in 2015 right 
And so you can see we spent 1.5, 1.6, 1.6, 1.7. Yeah, question seven. I, yeah, I mean, I, I've taken some physics classes. Uh, who absorbs those fees? Like, it, 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 if, if, the, if it's, it still costs 2.8 million for those fee, like for that medicine, who's absorbing that? Is that all your members combining? To absorb that fee, I guess uh, that's how insurance works, right? I mean, in, in his example, if a member was prescribed that medication, it, it's a new medication um, that, as he said, it, it's a drug, but it's infused. So it's I get a, that procedure. I'm just saying the money. Two point eight million. The county would absorb that. Yeah. Okay. Same thing if they were fully insured. For the taxpayer. The taxpayer would. Same thing if they're fully insured under Blue Cross or Coventry or whomever. That would be absorbed by the healthcare company that then would come back with, uh, you know, for instance. But to his point, his, to his point, I guess when he said, uh, you're basically making it to where only certain people can get those drugs, county employees, no. right? That's just no. totally like separate. <laughs> yeah, totally. But if you're a taxpayer, I mean, and you're not a part of the system, isn't it like a two class system, I guess it's almost. No, it's you a one class. We're hiring all the time. So. Yeah. <laughs> if you're a county employee, you're covered under the health insurance. Yeah. If you're not a county employee, but you're the not covered but under the tax. But the tax, I mean, it's a great uh, system, right, if you're an employee, but the taxpayer is absorbing that extra fee. Well, the taxpayer is funding everything the county does. So the, this health care plan is funded by, by the county, which is taxpayer dollars, plus employee contributions for either themselves or their dependents. Well, we were insured by someone else eight years ago. They were proposing for Camden County, the taxpayer, a 30% increase in cost in one year. Plus a deductible increase to each employee up to 2,500 there. Yeah, and it was, you know, where we were gonna be stuck with is eight years ago, each employee was gonna have to start bringing 250 bucks each out of their check. It's everywhere. Yeah, I, I know but it's a great system. What we've done over the last eight years is control the cost of our insurance to almost a level. And at the same time, uh, you check around, these people that uh, in Camden County have got an insurance that has protected them from financial devastation again and again and again. A straight plan. You're shifting all the risk, though, to the federal pool. Basically. That's what I'm saying, no. I guess. There is no federal pool. It the ACA. Like You're putting your high risk claimants on ACA after they hit a certain deadline. What, I think it was 25,000? 25,000 in coverage? No, I don't like what you're saying. So we're, 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 we're accessing an individual private policy through Anthem or who's another one? Am Better that's available on the marketplace, but it's not well, ACA, it's not Obamacare because they're, they're, they're not receiving a premium subsidy to pay for it. You're going to the federal government. So do you, do you understand that you can't go to healthcare.gov? You can, you can go ahead and, and get a plan. I mean, there are know, questions you can answer you if you want to see a tax credit. Sure. But that is a yes or no yeah, question. We answer no. We don't ask for a tax credit. We never receive a tax credit. I have many letters from the people we've signed up so that said at the top, no tax credit was taken. So whatever the, the premium cost is, you can go get a plan on the exchange and not take a tax credit. People don't realize that. That is the big misnomer when they they want to argue about this with us, is they assume we're always taking the tax credits. I have yet to sign anybody and take a tax credit. And so therefore you can't do this. We're gonna go ahead and put this on for Thursday to make our decision on which way we want to go. And we will vote on it on Thursday. Perfect. So the only decision that for our purposes, do you want renewal A, stay at 67.5 and pay 3% more for $2,000? Or do you want renewal B, raise your deductible from 67.5 to 70 and pay the same? That's the choice of that. If you want to right. look at that, Thank we can you. put it on for Thursday. Appreciate that. I mean, I'm going to either table it and put it on for Thursday, or we've got to have something uh, approved for Symmetra before the first of the year. That's or right. we don't have reinsurance coverage. That has to happen. That's right. And I'll tell you, this number is firm upon acceptance. So when I notify Symmetra of which way they're going to go, if the next day 
the wheels fall off the bus and everybody out here gets sick, Symmetra will not change their premium. But until I notify Symmetra of your intention, they reserve the right to adjust the premium renewal based off the risk. If the risk significantly changes. Hopefully that will change for two days. Hopefully not. <laughs> But okay. at the same time, to just accept it, we both own it in the same meeting as okay. practice that probably won't be going much forward in the future. I mean, we're going to reduce those. Okay. Well, that, and that's on the reinsurance. Yep, I'm going to make a motion to disable the reinsurance stop loss as well. I'll second. Till Thursday. Yep. Those in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we're done. We'll have that back on the agenda on Thursday and give you a decision. Thank you, Mr. Ace. All right, here, right. Where are we at in the world here? Where's my Here it is. Here it is. Thank y'all. There's a free seat here if she wants to come. <laughs> All right. You guys probably don't want to stay around guys. for this because the next thing on the agenda is marriage. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Okay. What's that? It sounded like all your water just it came back on about five minutes ago. Oh, is that what that noise was? Yeah. All right. Does so anyone want to take a break right quick? Yeah. Okay. We're going to take a five-minute break.